Hi, we're continuing with the Region 4 Director Spotlight interview. And today we are with the talented director of Metro Nashville Chorus, who has been a director for 34 years, Kim Wonders. Hi, Kim. Hi, Deb. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Good. So what is your music background? Well, um, I majored in uh, music in college. I had a uh, music education and um, have a BS in music education. I grew up in a very musical family. There were five of us children and my mother and dad both were involved. My dad was very involved in church music and served in some positions as a director of music at some churches. Um, so I grew up singing and uh, I have three sisters. And when we were growing up, we would have to do the dishes after dinner. So to keep from fighting, we would sing. And, and we would sing, um, we had it, playing in our house a lot was a lot of records, a lot of singers, Frank Sinatra, but um, the Andrews sisters, the McGuire sisters, the Lennon sisters. And so my sisters and I, we would sing all the songs we heard on the recordings and we would pick out parts as we were singing. That's and, very cool. Yeah, so nobody taught me how to sing. I mean, I, I, I don't remember not singing harmony. That's what I grew up learning to do, um, just picking out parts like that. So that, that was great fun. Um, and then the other funny thing about that is that um, my dad, and I think this is um, maybe a, a, another question along the line, but my dad um, also uh, had a great ear for music and he was a, a self-taught musician. Um, he played around on the piano and on, on the organ. He picked up a couple of musical instruments, never had any formal training, but he loved barbershop music. My dad did. And he would take us to concerts when we were kids. So we'd go hear a local men's chorus sing. And my dad would lean over and say, don't you hear that cool ninth chord? And I'm a kid and go, what's a ninth chord? <laughs> I didn't know. Wow, wow, that's amazing. I can't so even would, do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he would talk like that. And then um, when we were, like when I was a teenager, uh, I can remember that after dinner, we would sit around the dinner table and my dad would teach us tags. And he had a tag book. He had visited one of the men's choruses. He never joined because he was so involved with, with church music. He never found time. But um, so he would teach us tags. He'd say, let's sing a tag after dinner. And he had a pitch pipe. And so we'd all sing different parts. Um, and that's so that was my first exposure to barbershop as well. Well, that's very cool. Um, now I see you up there with the QC club and what part did you sing and with what quartet? I sang bass and um, I was in a quartet called Friendship Factor. And um, when I visited Sweet Adeline's, well, and let me tell you this about my musical background. I had just, I was out of college and I had started teaching at a high school and it was in January, it was a new semester and I was teaching a music uh, appreciation course. And I was explaining to the students, you know, that we're going to study all types of music and I don't expect them to love all types of music, but I, I want them to appreciate. And so one of the, you know, the kids asked me, well, what's your favorite kind of music? And I said, well, I, I like jazz and, and, and I like, um, you know, classical music. And this one young man, young man raised his hand and he said, well, have you ever heard of barbershop? And I said, yes. And he said, well, have you ever heard of Sweet Adeline's? Now, at that time, I was right out of college. I had heard of Sweet Eyed Lines, but I didn't know much about them. I knew they were the female counterpart. And I said, well, yes. He said, well, my mother sings in the Sweet Adeline chorus here. And I said, well, when do they rehearse? He said, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, where do they rehearse? He said, I don't know. <laughs> so I said, the next time your mother brings this up, let me know because I'm interested because I was right out of college looking for an outlet for myself. So that afternoon, that night, I got a phone call from his mother. She found my phone number and called me and said the course was meeting on Tuesday night. So I went the next night. And that night, three of the ladies came up to me afterwards and asked me if I would be interested in quartetting. And I said, oh, well, sure, that sounds like fun. And they said, we'll help you learn your audition piece. I said, oh, this is going to be fun. Isn't this going to be cute? 
So we started rehearsing as a quartet. Now this was in January and I joined the chorus in time to go to regional in uh, March or end of March. And it was in region four. And I thought, oh, isn't this cute? And so they helped me and I passed my audition and and you know, and, it, and then we, we stayed together as a quartet. And I thought, oh, this is fun. Isn't this cute? And at that regional, we went to the quartet contest and the bear totally leaned over to me and she goes, next year, that'll be us. And I said, wait, it's not fun anymore. It's no longer fun. So I sang, the baritone was Gwen Pullen, and I oh, sang with Gwen for six years. So we were in that quartet, and that quartet lasted maybe a year, and then we did personnel changes. And so the quartet that uh, we won region with was called Friendship Factor. It was in 1983 in region 23. Okay, that was like a year before I started. So yeah, so that's why I don't remember that. <laughs> It, that's that's probably true and I was very young well I was too <laughs> yes we were all younger then yes yeah, so um, how did you become the director of Metro Nashville well um when I joined the chorus and and um I had just started teaching in, in Nashville schools as I said I did I did band for a year but I knew I wanted to be a high school choral director and um, I got involved in the music team in Metro Nashville. And at the time, Edie Bailey was the director. Um, and she asked me to be an assistant director. And so I started learning under her and she was a wonderful teacher and was very good to allow me time in front of the chorus. And I kept thinking, well, this is kind of fun. And at that point, when I was an assistant director, I didn't think I want to be a director. I just knew that I was learning a lot. And before I directed Metro Nashville, while I was still assistant director of Metro Nashville, I was approached by the Bowling Green Chorus. And I directed them for two years. And I was in region 23 at the time and they, you know, they were in part of region four, but I directed them from 1986 till 1988. Okay. Um, do you have any hobbies other than music? Uh, I like to read and um, I enjoy um, crossword puzzles, word games, and, um, and I like baseball. Who's your favorite team? The Chicago Cubs. <laughs> like anybody knows that. Okay. They're, yeah, they're the lovable losers. Yes. So what's your favorite memory as a director? Wow, there are so many. Um, you know, I think of all the performances that we've had the opportunity to do. And yes, competitions. Um, the first regional contest we won was was a great memory. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to compete at, um, you know, Harmony Classic five times. And, and those performances were special to me. And probably the first time we were in the top 10 in Baltimore um, was a highlight of, of my directing career. And, and I think, um, and then there are numerous performances where whether it was for a community organization or, or at a regional event, the, the performances that stand out are also the ones where I am moved by the audience's response or after the performance, the audience comes up and says, you know, that impacted me. That, that made a, an impression on me because it was moving. And, and those are the, the things that to me, yes, the competitions are fun, but it's who, it's the lives we get to touch and that touch us as we perform. I agree. And so how has this organization changed your life? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. Um, it has provided me many opportunities to grow as a singer and a musician and a, and a director. Um, and when I was an assistant director, they had a international director seminar in Denton, Oklahoma. And, um, and I went, the course sent me, and I remember sitting in this vocal production class with Carolyn Butler. And back in those days, in the early 80s, Carolyn Butler and Mary Dick and Jarmela Spada were the gurus of vocal production. And I was in this class with Carolyn Butler and she was talking about all this stuff about drop lift and intercostal muscles and all. And, and I'm sitting there and my head is spinning and my eyeballs are like banging together. And I first thought, I'll, I'll never learn all this. 
And then I thought, no, wait a minute. If I want to be a high school choral director, I need to know this. And so I decided then I've got to learn this. So because of, of my career of what I wanted to do, again, I, I didn't have aspirations at that point to direct a chorus. But um, so that was a big impact on me of becoming a better singer um, and educator and musician, like I said. And even though, you know, I had um, lots of music classes in college, I feel like the education I have received through Sweet Adelines has been uh, uh, far more uh, productive for me and helpful for me. And it's allowed me to meet people from all over the world. Yeah, I, I totally, totally, totally agree with you on that. So I know you're on the regional management team and international faculty. What kind of rewards or self-fulfillment do you get out of that, being involved in those two areas? Uh, well, being on the regional management team is, um, it's interesting because I think from the outside, it looks like, you know, that we make all the decisions and and have power, whatever, you know, that term. But from the inside, it's a lot of work. And I want to do what I can for the best of the region. What's going to benefit the most members? Um, and I think, too, that when, when we sit at the RMT table, and I learned this a long time ago, before there was an RMT, remember, they had regional board. And one of the things that I learned is that when I sit at that table, I take off, I have to take off my chorus hat and put on my regional hat and try to figure out what's going to be the best benefit for the region, not just what's in it, not what's in it for my course, but what's it, what's in it for all of us. So it, and it means we have to make some tough decisions and they're not always favorable, kind of like the international board, they have to make tough decisions, but trying to decide what is going to be best for the for the region and moving forward and seeing the region regional events to me those are the rewards is seeing people sit in a class that the rmt has provided you know with the faculty we bring in and to see people's lights go on and get excited because you know ryan heller was here at singing summit and for some people that was the most you know they they learned so much that weekend so that's part of the rewards is seeing the region grow um, as musicians and singers, and even numerically, you know what it's like, Deb, when, when we see new choruses come up or, or new quartets. Um, to me, that's part of the reward. And it's the same thing being on the international faculty. I love to teach. I love music. And so it gives me an opportunity to do both. And um, it provides me an opportunity. And I feel like I'm a lifelong learner. Every time I teach a class, I learn something and sometimes it's not right in the moment. Sometimes it's after the class and I'll walk away and maybe a couple of days later I'll think, I learned from this class. So I feel like I learn every time I teach. And even when I taught high school, it was so much fun to see the aha moments in people's eyes when they finally get it. Or um, when, when a person hears an overtone for the first time, Th that is so exciting. So those are the rewards for me, is seeing people have those aha moments and helping people capture the joy of learning and the joy of singing, I think is, is what to me is re are, are rewards. Oh, I think that's great. So um, before we finish up, I've been asking all the directors, um, what are some words that you live by in your daily life or chorus life or sweet Adeline life? there's a lot of words that go through my head. <laughs> you know, first you think of what will your parents tell you, always wear clean underwear. <laughs> you know? But that's, <laughs> that's not the one that I think of every day. Well, it might be, but um, I, I think about, um, I, I, there's a couple things. As a director, it's okay to be relentless, but we don't want to be ruthless. And, um, and as I used to tell my students this, and I even, and I tell my course, you know, life is full of change. Uh, life, life is full of choices. Choose wisely. 
And then um, the other thing is, is I try to be, um, remember to be humble and hungry. And, um, and it's a great article I found and it, it, it talks about being humble in that, um, you know, we don't know everything. We're always, we're always learning and always, you know, put yourself, put others before yourself, uh, being humble and being hungry. Always try to learn more. Always try to do your best. Make sure that your next effort is your best effort. Uh, and so um, I always remember to try to be humble and hungry. Oh, I think those are great words to live by. Well, Kim, I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for this director chat. And um, I know I've enjoyed these. I've enjoyed getting to know people. And um, it's just been a pleasure to talk with you today. Well, thank you, Deb. And thank you for doing this. I think it was a great idea you had. And um, I'm enjoying learning more about the directors in our organization because so many times we just see the backs of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know? well, thank, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you, Deb. All right. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. -bye. Bye.